Rick McCallum talks live action Star Wars TV, and Sideshow spills the beans on a lot of new upcoming product. It's Wednesday, June 15th, and you'll hear about those stories and more this week in Star Wars. This Week in Star Wars is your source for new and noteworthy developments from the galaxy far, far away. I'm your host, Matt Fox. And now, this week's lead stories. Prequel producer Rick McCallum, who has been ominously silent since the end of the live-action films, emerged from his undisclosed location this week to speak with the website Check Position. That's Czech is in the Central European country, not the English word. In the interview, McCallum repeats that there are about 50 hours worth of scripts in the, what he calls, third draft stage, and that simply now they are waiting for an economical means to produce the television show, and he estimates that this technology will be affordable in three or four years. Most noteworthy, however, McCallum commented on what the basic storyline would be of the series. While we have been told on the past by Lucasfilm that the series will be set between episodes 3 and 4, McCallum now tells us that it will be in the style of the Godfather films, in that they will focus on the criminal underworld of Coruscant and feature underground bosses who, quote, live there and control drugs and prostitution. McCallum also said that it was likely that much of the show would be shot in Prague, thus the Czech connection, although McCallum made no definitive statement that this would be, in fact, the case. Lucasfilm is not entirely without experience producing film in the Czech Republic, however, as much of the upcoming Red Tails was produced in that country. Since the closest I come to speaking Czech is that I can say Tichy Slovakai, which is the German word for a country that doesn't even exist anymore, I am not even going to attempt to pronounce or spell the website on which this interview appears, However, I will post a link to it on the This Week in Star Wars Facebook page. McCallum also had another interesting comment in the same interview about the upcoming 3D releases, which is proving to be very fertile link bait on the internet. When asked about the upcoming 3D releases, McCallum comments that they will be coming out one a year, so long as they work. If they do not work, however, McCallum states that only Episode 1 will be converted to 3D. I recommend you read the article for yourself and draw your own inferences. Me? I'm a collecting fool. The high-end licensee Sideshow Collectibles released this week a Q&A, which touched on many upcoming Star Wars products. While some of these had been alluded to before, many of them had not. The list of confirmed upcoming 12-inch, 1-6th scale figures now includes a new Darth Vader, which they describe as deluxe, featuring equipment to make him appear as he did in either episodes 5 or 6, and episode 1, Obi-Wan Kenobi, a General Grievous, which allegedly will be quite large, and there were a number of allusions to many upcoming bounty hunters, including IG-88, possibly, Boba Fett, as well as a Jango Fett and other Mandalorians to follow. Speaking of Boba Fett, there will be a new Boba Fett premium format with an Empire Strikes Back design costume, and eager fans will be able to see many of these products at next month's San Diego Comic-Con convention. In the meantime, Sideshow has posted images of an upcoming premium format one-quarter scale Han Solo in Carbonite. It will be available for pre-order on Thursday, June 16th, and is priced just south of $300. Gentle Giant Collectibles was not to be outdone as they announced a number of new items available for pre-order. The final two jumbo reproductions of the original 12 Kenner Star Wars figures are now available for pre-order. Those would be the droids C-3PO and R2-D2. The two new minibus that were announced were prequel Toy Darian Watto and classic trilogy Ewok Logray a Savage Opress Clone Wars maquette, and a new Darth Vader Empire Strikes Back statue rounded out the new products that are available for pre-order on the Gentle Giant website. Sandtroopers.com has new images of upcoming Clone Wars 3-pack repack figure specials. These sets are already appearing in the United Kingdom and Canada. There is, however, no word as to whether they will be widely available in the United States 
or are destined to be an exclusive. In video game news this week, as expected at last week's E3 industry trade show, Star Wars Connect, the motion-sensitive Star Wars lightsaber game which has been long promised, was formally announced and a demo and trailer were shown to the public. These are now available for your viewing pleasure on StarWars.com. Star Wars Connect is expected to be released in the fourth quarter of this year. Also debuting last week was a new cinematic trailer for the upcoming MMORPG, Star Wars The Old Republic. This also is available for viewing on StarWars.com, as well as at The Old Republic's official site, and looks as stunning as all the previous trailers for this game. Whenever The Old Republic is actually released, it appears that your online source for the game will be Electronic Arts' newly relaunched Origin online game store. According to the Independent out of the UK, the game designer looks to make a foothold for itself in the burgeoning online game purchasing world by making a number of its titles, including Star Wars The Old Republic, exclusives to their site in an effort to compete with industry leader Valve and other presences such as GameStop and the Xbox Live Marketplace. In publishing news this week, it was announced that Sue Rossoni, executive editor at Lucas Books, will be retiring in July of 2011. Rustoni has been with Lucas Books for over 20 years and was a constant presence on the official Star Wars forums when they existed and on the convention circuit. Further details of the announcement are available on StarWars.com. In comic book stores next week will be Dark Horse's Dark Side number 2 and online in the e-reader bookstore of your choice nearly every old Star Wars novel ever published, as we had discussed before. Lastly this week, in what appears to have been the final performance of the long-running Star Wars in Concert Tour, last weekend at the Hollywood Bowl in Los Angeles, California, Star Wars conductor and composer John Williams himself took to the stage to conduct the orchestra in the performance of the Imperial March. This according to Collider.com. A link to the video of this performance is available on the This Week in Star Wars Facebook page. So did Rick McCallum really mean that we weren't going to see episodes 2 through 6 in 3D if we didn't all turn out for episode 1? And does the same policy hold true for the rest of the film? Is this like Lucasfilm being the parent and telling us that we don't get dessert until we finish eating our vegetables? And if this is really the case, would he choose the Czech press to convey the message to us? In one respect, it's axiomatic that if the first film does not do well in theaters and doesn't recoup the money they spent making it into 3D, then we aren't going to see the rest. But really, I mean, what is that threshold? Are they so concerned that they feel the need to issue these veiled threats? Now, I don't have any concerns about the quality of the 3D transfer of these films. I'm sure if Lucasfilm is going to set out to do it, they'll do it very well. The question is, and always has been, whether or not 3D is simply a fad. Certainly Avatar was a blockbuster, but maybe that was just Avatar. Nothing else has been a blockbuster in 3D, and as a home format, it hasn't caught on at all. So maybe it is an open question as to whether or not we make it all the way to Jedi, but just for different reasons than Mr. McCallum thought. And that was This Week in Star Wars. Join us again next week for more news, notes, and developments from the galaxy far, far away. Visit our website, www.thisweekinstarwars.com, or if you're in a hurry, www.twisw.com. There you can find past episodes, links to some of the stories we discussed, as well as photo galleries and other interesting Star Wars related tidbits. You can also find links to the other realms of the This Week in Star Wars media empire, including our Breaking News Twitter feed, our Facebook page, as well as links to email addresses where you can contact the show. If you have questions or comments or news suggestions, we encourage you to contact us at host at thisweekinstarwars.com. 
Help us grow the community. If you enjoyed this podcast, please leave a positive review at iTunes. You've been listening to This Week in Star Wars. We troll the web so you don't have to. This Week in Star Wars is not affiliated with Lucasfilm, its subsidiaries, or any other entity mentioned in this podcast. Star Wars, its characters, and creations are the property of Lucasfilm. All of the trademarks are property of their respective trademark owners. This Week in Star Wars is intended for informational and entertainment purposes only. This podcast is copyright 2010, This Week in Star Wars. Invaluable technical assistance provided by WebStorm Interactive. News, comments, and questions can be directed to host at thisweekinstarwars.com. More information, links to stories presented, past episodes, and additional contact information are available at www.thisweekinstarwars.com. For four long years, I have listened to you all complain about your East Coast media elite problems, your apartment renovations, and your overpriced Star Wars memorabilia.